be done. And that's part of what the discussion was last year when we went through the budget cycle of why we needed to fund some of the park maintenance. And that goes hand in hand with that. And that's how we got to these figures. So is there a place in this document that uh, that breaks down, you know, those maintenance costs? See, these are combined here. And so I, I by looking, yeah, this is capital, I understand. So so are you saying that the capital, that, that applies to capital as well? Because these seem to be, uh, well, the capital facility plan is including then what you're saying is maintenance budget as well. No? Yes. I'm trying to figure so, out. So how, John, here, here's my root question, just to make sure I'm clear. I, I would like to know <clears throat> uh, what this plan will cost our residents uh for whichever portions they're paying for, whether they're helping to contribute to capital uh, development or or a combination of capital development and operations and maintenance, you know, versus developer fees. And I just wasn't able to discern that directly from the table here, but maybe that's in a different place. So I would say you need to look back at a, we just passed a capital improvement plan by resolution that adopted this, that has that information. So this plan just gives you a basic summary that outlines both of these funding go towards that. But Park impact fees that come from developer is adding capacity when you're going in and repairing or upgrading old outdated equipment, that's general fund. And I can get you that information, but you, the, what's in that plan, you previously approved by resolution at a previous council meeting for the capital improvement plan. Yeah, well, I think uh, that that may be that it was approved by council. I think, I, I hope that I made comments at that point that, you know, um, it's one thing to approve a plan, but you know, there's a lot in a plan like that. And um, I am frankly a little weary of 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 approving um, bits and pieces in advance of the final there's a vernacular here, gotcha, where it's like, you know, you already voted for this. It's already in the budget. The council approved it. And then when it comes time to the brass tax of, hey, you know, we need to get a bond issue out or we need to spend $2 million on a facility, you know, we're already nine tenths of the way there in our in in our process. And and I, you know, I'm, I'm thinking like, well, I don't want to spend $2 million on a park facility right now. And I don't really want to spend $2 million on a park facility next year either. So I ask myself, should I be approving a plan that includes an outlook for spending $2 million on a facility, even though I'm not allocating funding today? I don't think I am, right? Is that, no, I'm not allocating funding. I'm just, I'm just saying, yeah, this looks like a dandy plan, but actually to me, it doesn't because it's, it's, it's the overall cost is higher than I want our citizens to bear. I would, I would prefer a different plan that has a smaller cost, and then we could always boost it in the future. So I, unless there's, I'm convinced, and it might get convinced in the next five minutes, I, I'm, I'm going to vote no on this plan. But I want to make sure that you understand that I certainly appreciate the effort. It's very professionally done. It all is great. I just don't think we can afford it. Until I have a, a, a warm, fuzzy feeling that we have enough money in the bank to take care of our roads, which is this huge over <laughs> cloud over our city waiting to happen. Uh, and I don't want to be like Spokane. I had in-laws in Spokane. I traveled there, you know, almost every month for years. Places filled with potholes. It's just miserable. I mean, the, the alignment specialists are, are making a good living up there. I don't want that to happen here. And I don't see that we have the budget to, to approve a plan quite like this. So that's my comment. And I'll let other people talk. Thank you. Thank you. Um, my only comment to two, two for one comment is on the plan itself. As we succumb to the pressures of the Growth Management Act and basically no one gets a quarter acre lot anymore even. Um, and we're putting what, is it nine per acre? Is that what we're doing? On the road in house. some zones that that's allowed, yes. Yeah. So um, we the 
the open space that many of us have enjoyed growing up in West Richland or living in West Richland is disappearing. So the park plan is to preserve that open space. Um, the my, my biggest concern, and we'll get to that next, is the maintenance issue. As we build more parks, we have to maintain them. Maintenance is fully a burden of the general fund. Um, some of the efforts that have gone forth to try and fund this is the effort at uh, the uh, raceway um, as, as giving us a, 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 a small contribution to dedicated to park uh, maintenance or at least quasi dedicated could be considered indicated to park maintenance. Um, the capital projects listed in here are associated with us maintaining us, the city maintaining parks. And I've brought this up in some of the other discussions is that we really need to look hard at outsourcing park maintenance and we wouldn't have to build a $2 million park maintenance facility if we outsourced it. Um, Mr. Slade talks about the prevailing wage for those workers. I looked, it wasn't that bad. And I'm, I'm thinking that we really should look into outsourcing some of the maintenance. So thank you. Well, to piggyback on your comments, Mayor Pro Tem, um, I think this should be taken in the same vein that we pass a six-year transportation improvement plan. I mean, there's a lot of things in there, big dollars signs in that one as well, but it is just a plan. And um, it helps us communicate to the citizens, too, what the impact is when we have this plan in place. Um, if we don't pass this plan, um, in the end, what kind of feedback can we give citizens when we haven't approved a plan to show them costs of what's going to happen. So um, I, I agree it's a it's a hard pill to swallow with the price tag, but it is a plan. Um, and with a plan, you start working towards accomplishing the plan. So I'm in favor of it. Make one quick rebuttal. It seems like I'm a, a lone guy out here, but that's fine. I'm used to that. Um, I uh, I understand the idea that it's a plan, and I've in my comments I understand that we're not allocating funds today. But but I'll just uh, very briefly reiterate that there are components to this plan, like a two million dollar facility and uh, drinking fountains 
installed and things and things that are of significant cost that I just don't agree with. And that's why I'm going to vote against it. Not because I don't think we should not have a plan. I, I just think that if I'm going to vote, if I'm going to put my name on a plan, uh, if it were just a few things here and there, but it's not, it's like, 10 to 30% of this plan is things that I don't think we should be planning for. And that's my reason for not voting for this. It's not because I don't understand the process. I want to make that clear. Um, so if it were up to me, I would send this back with additional comments and we would vote on it again. And it would, you know, it might be a, a $6 million overall cost with, with uh, lesser things being planned for. Um, but I'll just leave it at that. But thank you for the time. Thanks. Aye. Aye. Nay. Thank you, thank you, Mayor Pro Tem Brink. So, um, similar to the park plan, and as I stated before, the community development department, will, um, in concert with the public works department, as we are going through the parks plan, realized that as we develop parks, there is a significant cost to them, and we wanted to really nail down what that is. And so, we reached out to some firms, um, council. Uh, approved a contract for with the with allow the mayor to sign a contract with SiteWorks to perform a detailed audit and review of our current parks to show where we have gaps and to show actual costs to operate and maintain the park systems. This information was used to establish a basic level of service for parks and maintenance and operation um, that can be found in resolution 4122 that was adopted also on September 20th of 2022. And I just want to say here is that um, as we went through that and, and this informed that decision that council made is that there was basic is the lowest level of service that we have. We have basic standard and premium and so because of the actual cost to maintain these parks, council is um, setting the standard at basic right now. Um, unfortunately, because of some budget constraints, council is not able to fully fund that level of service at this time. Um, and that was some of the considerations that were taken during the budget cycle. Um, but the standard, the, the basic is the level of service that was adopted under that resolution. Um, the proposed park operation and maintenance plan went through the parks board and the council park subcommittee. Uh, they had multiple opportunities similar to the parks plan to comment and provide input on it. Um, and then on March 20th, the park board voted to recommend council to approve the proposed plan. Similarly, the park subcommittee met three times and discussed the O&M plan as well and voted unanimously to recommend due pass to council. Um, again, this is a very detailed plan. As you saw, it's a few hundred pages long. It also includes the ADA transition plan as an appendix that's previously been adopted. And a lot of the things that it identifies, you know, we, we grab and put them in that six year uh, improvement project list that you saw in the park plan because there's over $3 million worth of deferred maintenance that exists out there of things that need to be done to our parks that just haven't been able to be funded and taken care of. Fortunately, council did take some uh, hard measures this last budget cycle, made some other cuts elsewhere so that there could be some funding allocated towards that deferred maintenance, but there's still a long way to go. Um, as you read this document, it really goes through and provides all of the details as far as what's needed and why it's needed. So it's a great document. Staff, um, in concert with the consultant, put a lot of effort into it, um, went out to all the different parks and did some a lot of uh, boots on the ground to do some analysis. And staff supports the park board and the council subcommittee in recommending council to adopt the proposed park operation and maintenance plan as proposed.
No, I do not. Seeing no one, I will close the public hearing. I move to pass resolution 30-23 and adopt the park operation and maintenance plan. Second. You have oh, oh. council member Moran. Thank you. Um, I would like to thank the member of the community that came up and spoke about the water issues. And I think that for me, that's something that I Whenever we're in parks or even on the council, when we're discussing any land improvements, parks, whatever, I'm always making certain that we discuss using native plants that are especially low water requirement whenever we're doing anything. Um, I know that there's a lot of need for grass fields, but they take so much water. I think it's really important to look at our native plants and other plants that don't take as much water. So when we're looking at this, I would like to reiterate that every time it comes to council or the parks subcommittee, we do talk about that. But thank you very much for the comment on that. Yes. Uh, I want to comment on the water. Mr. Slade, most of the water for the parks like Bombing Range Park and, and Flat Top Park and the new park out on uh, Red Mountain, um, those are all irrigation water. Is that not correct? Yeah, the sports complex has Columbia Irrigation District irrigation water. Flat top is serviced by Columbia Irrigation District. Uh, and the new one at the Heights of Red Mountain is is provided irrigation water from the Lewis and Clark Irrigation District. Right. I mean, a couple of our parks may be city water. Is that correct? We still have several that are on city water. Some of the older parks and the, as I think she was commenting about the Storm drainage facility that's coming up the hill on Bomb Range has uh, park-like amenities above the storm drainage, and that's on city water also there. All right. Thank you. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, so on, uh, I think it was page 22, it's hard to, to flip through these pages on the tablets, but there was a basic standard and like premium levels of maintenance hours per year per park, I think. And I'm curious to know if we, uh, if we know what the comparison is between what we're spending now on those parks versus, say, the basic level of service, or is there a? Do we know the numbers that we spend right now on hours per park? Um, sorry, I think it's page twenty. Is it in there? Okay, I must have missed it. Sorry, but if it is, I mean, do you know what I? I, I didn't, I didn't catch head. that. I'm sorry. It's uh, I, I do know the consultant recommended seven staff to to maintain your existing parks and council funded one. So, uh, what do we use now? Though we have one, or wait, what what what's the what's the number of staff that you would say that are that end up spending time on operations and maintenance of our parks today, uh, roughly? No, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I I wish you would have given these questions I know, beforehand. I'm sorry. I, so I, I think we have four. Okay. Four full time, yeah. and then we could have upwards of ten seasonals, and then we do do uh, offender work crews go out and assist on on the park maintenance. Yeah, and that's but, but the my... dollar amounts nowhere near the basic level that was adopted last year. And and right, so I guess my other uh, question on the on these, and by, by the way, again, this is really a great thorough assessment of our parks, guys. I mean. Seriously, you've got identified maintenance concerns and bulletized lists for each park and accessibility needs. Um, you know, as a council member, I, I just am obviously, uh, as we all are, uh, 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 mandated to watch our costs. Um, so in that regard, how would we prioritize these is that in here as well like so for accessibility needs as an example it doesn't matter which park they all have different accessibility needs would when when it comes in the course of the five years would we uh basically allocate funds based on our available grants or something i'm curious to know what how we're going to decide which comes first second or third like do we spend the money on maintenance do we spend the money on 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 accessibility etc all right i mean is that in here <laughs> 
it's, it's in your budget, but, uh, um, yeah. So you have that an 500 ADA, page budget. You, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You've had a, you've had a ADA transition plan that identified ADA issues in the park for probably a decade. And I'd say that council's allocated <clears throat> uh, limited funds towards that. We've taken opportunities uh, when we were doing deferred maintenance, is there a way to correct the ADA issue? So that's kind of factored into those uh, items. But again, I think Eric talked about it. You have over $3 million of deferred maintenance. And what was presented at the budget was to spread that out over five, six years. I think the ask was 600,000 and council allocated in this two-year cycle, 200,000 to see what we can do uh, with that. Basically right. show us you can spend the public's money wisely before it, and then look at the next budget cycle. So um, I was talking to Mayor Pro Tem uh, Brink about this earlier. What you're going to see is probably, I don't know if it's this year or first right after the first of the year, I've asked our park supervisor to keep track of those things and make a presentation to council so you can actually see what you're getting for your $100,000 a year towards ADA and deferred maintenance. Um, your other question... <laughs> just the yeah, just the prioritization. I, I, I mean, and I, there's I, no real set process for that, right? It's kind of case it, by it case. It was high, low, and medium. So we try to focus on the high ones that are safety issues. Um, I think we saw that when we went through the survey of the facilities. There was some. Um, I think they labeled it one critical that was actually taken care of the same day of the survey was completed when it was identified. Um, so yeah, it gives you a list, and we try to pick off the high ones first. And then start working down the low priorities based on 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 budget, John, and that's done it at, at my level with my supervisor in the in the parks. Right, right. Yeah, well, I really like the detail. Um, and although I have previously stated I'm not thrilled with the overall uh, 13 million dollar over six year cost, um, I, I I want to support this list of you know, maintenance and accessibility needs and the safety needs, like you said. And I understand like the last uh, five minutes ago when we voted on the on the plan that this isn't an allocation of funds. This is just an, um, a, a yay verily that this is a good um, list of uh, things that need to be done. So I just wanted to explain that no, that's, because that's it might seem like there's a dichotomy in my thinking here, but there's not. It, it is a plan. In my that, mind, <laughs> it, it's a plan that so, staff will follow, Councilmember Smart. So you will see those asked in fine. the future budget requests. But I think the most important thing is now that we have the tools as a city, not just staff but council. So when a new park comes before you and goes to the thing, we're not just looking at all, all the pretty amenities or all the trees or all the open grass. They're also going to come for what's the maintenance cost of that? Right. So uh, we have a new development coming forward. Eric's working with the developer on developing that park. It's a five acre park. It's in our park plan. The developer's putting it in as, in lieu of park impact fees, but we're also asking what's the maintenance cost. And so that will be factored in when it goes through the park board and ultimately comes to council. So you'll see what, uh, when we're doing something new, you're going to see what the cost is to maintain it and be asked to fund that. So right. if it's a splash park, we're not, you know, it's great. We can go get grants to go build the $2 million splash park. Right. But you're going to, we're going to figure out where the $80,000 a year to maintain it's going to come before we go build it. So that's what's changed with this plan. We now have the tools before us to to look at those things, John. So the plan gives it, lays it out, but we still will have to refer back to it as we move through, forward through budget cycles. Right. And I, I, I agree with that. And I appreciate the need for this type of a plan, even for our current parks. Uh and so that's that's appreciated, and and I do also appreciate our opportunity to regulate the amount of money that goes into that uh, as each year goes by. So, thank you for that time.
Aye. 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 Thank you, sir. Uh, so after the final draft of the park plan was ready, staff performed a review. As I stated earlier, of the adopted level of service standard for new development, we use the estimates from the Lewis and Clark Ranch master plan development that they've been working on to show what costs of the different types of parks would be. Um, to develop what is proposed for the park impact fee, due to the significant increase uh, of the park impact fee, the, uh, the city staff is recommending to uh, increase the fee gradually over the next several years. Uh, every six months, add the additional amount. So it's kind of a tiered process uh, that allow for developers to not have to bite that chunk off all at once, uh, but we'll be able to um, do that over a period of time. Um, and then at the end of it, once it reached the, the actual impact fee amount that's proposed, then every year it would be increased by the CPI index so that it keeps up with inflation. Um, with regards to the park use or reservation fees, uh, staff is finding that we're spending a significant amount of time uh, scheduling these park reservations for a lot of users that are outside of the city. And so we um, aren't covering our time. We feel like it's important to do that. It's responsible for us to do that. So we put together a, a proposal to increase those fees. I took that to the parks board. They said, sound looks good. Um, I brought it to the park subcommittee. They said, uh, it looks okay, but you should add a dollar to each line item. Um, so we did uh, because they still thought it was not enough to cover our costs which I would agree with. So they, um, what's before you this evening is what the park subcommittee is proposing, which is that additional dollar amount uh, for that park reservation fee for users of our park to reserve our parks and use them for soccer or baseball or whatever they might use it for. Oh, and it has a due pass recommendation from the subcommittee and the board. I move to pass resolution 30-23 and adopt the amended master fee schedule. Second. Thank you. Um, just a quick question on usage fees. Um, I sat on the grill board of directors. I was actually treasurer when the fee when we started having to make um, reservations to use the fields. I know Grill was raised the funds to build the complex. Have those credits been used up by Rich and Little, Greater Rich and Little League? Every year they come in and do a new project and it more than covers their costs. So thank you. That's what I was looking for. Thank you. Um, first, I would like to say thank you to staff for the elegant decision to or the elegant option to give for gradually increasing the rate because i know that some developers would be very upset to suddenly find out that they have extraordinarily more to pay than the people the previous year so thank you for that recommendation also um i it it's not in here but i think it would be interesting for folks if they're looking at how much we are asking for park reservations in this comparing to other cities. If I remember correctly, we still are not asking for it as much or even more than most, if not all of the other cities around us. Is that correct? Or the cheapest gig in town. Right. So I would just like to say that if you think these are bad, try getting a park in one of the other cities nearby. And this is just for non-residents. We're talking about bumping this up.
Bye. Bye. My show tonight, apparently. So uh, the city of West Richland received a request by the Senior Center Board to rename the West Richland Senior Center to the Bill Shane Senior Center. Bill Shane was an integral part to the Senior Center with much of the West Rich and much of the West Richland community. Bill Shane passed away on December 20th, 2022. Bill Shane served as the president of the Senior Center, volunteered for the West Richland Chamber of Commerce, volunteered for the Benton County Fire District 4, and served as a commissioner in the late 1970s. Bill was a huge part of the community and provided many selfless hours serving the community and the Senior Center. The Park Board and City staff um, has reviewed the, rec reviewed the request and recommends City Council to approve the proposed rename. I move to approve resolution 32-23, renaming the West Richland Senior Center to the Bill Shane Senior Center. Second. Motion and a second, Council. Thank you. Um, Don't forget public Chairman. comment. Um, I just want to say thank you to the staff um, being involved with this and to let Council know that Every every entity we went to to talk about um, renaming the senior center unanimously voted in favor of it. Bill was an icon in this city, and uh, not only with the fire district, with the police department, with the city, with Roscoe, <laughs> um, with um, the West Richland Chamber, um, just countless hours he put in and dedicated um, to this city. And I think it would be a huge honor to for him, for the family, and um, I encourage everybody to vote for this. Thank you. May I have a motion? Uh, I have a motion. May I have a vote? Please, all in favor, say aye. 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 Ninety one, section six. I'm trying not to focus on the past. I want to go forward, but the past is haunting us. And it's to deal with ordinance ten twenty that was filed this year. And it's on the land patents. I spent the last five years since you guys brought me to a meeting in 2019. My life's been like this. We have a problem with the plat of section six of Willamette Heights. Um after Congress, I'm just going to read this, you guys. After Congress established a Small Tract Act of 1938 and the Small Tract Classification Order Number 5 was published in the Federal Register in 1954, a plat of Willamette Heights containing a dedication that stated, the United States is owner of the land. Two, a subdivision shall hereafter be known as designated by the name Willamette Heights. And three, a strip 30 foot wide on each side of each lot 
shall be available to public utilities was filed at the request of Willamette Heights Association, who did not own the public lands. Public lands are owned by the United States government, administered to the Secretary of the Interior, and managed by the Bureau of Land Management. And I live right next to about 40 acres of them. So I understand. In addition, according to the RCW 58-17020, the intent to dedicate shall be evidenced by the owner, which was the United States of America, for, by the presentment for filing of the final plat or a short plat, showing the dedication thereon. Almost two weeks later, the first land patent was issued. Consequently, Section 6 and Section 8 properties may contain conflicting property descriptions. Having just been through the Board of Equalization <sighs> do loop, <laughs> this is a real problem. It's on our official tax notices. Uh, I went together, I put packets together on Section 8 and Section 6 using the Assessor website. The amount of non-recorded utilities and roads is phenomenal. Section 8 doesn't even have a Section 6 plat of Willamette Heights. There is nothing. It's called Willamette Meridian. So we're using Willamette Heights out of a plat. We're using Willamette Meridian, which is on the official... Um, the Willamette Meridian Washington with the T9R Range 28 East, Section 6, Lot 91, has it. Right after it says, the area described contains two and a half acres, according to the official plat of the survey of the said land on file in the Bureau of Land Management. That's what my patent says. That's my deed to my property. Now, any future warranty deeds contain either the land patent or they will contain... Um, well, I like this one. They contain both of them. They contain, contain the Willamette Memoridian. And they also contain Lot 91 plats of Section 6 of Willamette Heights, according to the plat there are recorded in Volume 5 of Plats, page 52, Records of Benton County. I have two plats, two locations, one deed, and a real mess. Now, the plat of Willamette Heights is 30 feet. Mayor Pro Tem Brink, it has been three minutes. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else here to speak? Is there anyone on virtual who would like to provide a citizen comment? If so, please raise your virtual hand or press star nine and be followed by the No, I do not. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, good evening, Council. Tonight I was going to speak on behalf of the SRO contract with the Richland School District. So I'll go ahead and speak after the fact. You've uh, obviously already approved it. So thank you. Um, as many of you already know, the police department has provided a school resource office to the school district within our jurisdiction for a number of years. Unfortunately, due to staffing issues, we were not able to fill that position uh, when Officer Letourneau retired in April of 2021. The department worked through those issues and were able to assign Officer Jordan King to our school February of this year. Dr. Schelling Redinger and the the Richland School District Superintendent, along with the Richard Krasner, the Executive Director of Operations, we're very thankful that we were able to finally fill the vacant position and offered to help the city with the financial load to fund the police officer position. Under the terms of the agreement you have before you tonight, Richland School District will reimburse the city 50% of the SRO's wages and benefits and 100% of overtime incurred of the SRO position. Additionally, Richland School District has agreed to reimburse the city 50% of any related training costs. It is noteworthy that the agreement will be in effect until 2027-2028 school year. The department's relationship with the school district has strengthened beyond my expectations, and I I'm committed to maintain that relationship. 
This long-term commitment can provide stability and predictability for both parties and can be seen as a positive step toward promoting safety and well-being in the West Richland School District. So I just wanted to just give you that tonight, even though it's already passed. And that's all I had to say. Thanks. Mayor Pro Tem, um, I would just like to invite everybody to the re-grand opening of the seniors, the Bill Shane Senior Center. It's going to be June 10th, Saturday, and it we are having a ceremony at 11:30, and we're hoping a lot of the different um, city council and mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, and staff that have been involved with had been involved with Bill Shane could attend. And then um, we have a lot of senior members and a lot of community members that are coming. And afterwards, we'll have a big barbecue. Um, so it should be lots of fun and should be he has all this um, all the families coming in for this big event. So I invite you all to come starts at 1130 on June 10th. Thank you. Speaking of plans. Tomorrow, I have three hours set aside to go through the solid waste plan, <laughs> um, which again is a plan. Uh, one of the aspects of plans is, especially the solid waste plan, is you cannot request funding for something that's not already in the plan. And so that's something consistent with our, our uh, uh, park plan. Um, but speaking of planning, for those that have nothing better to do on Memorial Day weekend, uh, on Sunday, the transit will be having their annual bus rodeo. And if you ever wanted to see a bunch of buses move around the lot and try and not hit cones, it's kind of neat, and and I've attended a couple of times, so it will be at the uh, transit center, the transit lot down off of uh, Columbia Drive, uh, starting at about eight o'clock, runs till about noon, and uh, you can see how how well the drivers actually do. I mean, it, it's amazing. They have to go through a spot where they have six inches to clear doing at least 30 miles an hour. So it's it's yeah, it's it's kind of neat. They hit a barrel or two, but anyway. Um so but um uh, but they don't let me drive. 